Hello everyone. So now let's go to seminar four and let's have a look at the questions here. Okay. Okay. Right. So as you see here, we have a question number one. This is question number one. As you see, um, the question um, asks you to uh, record uh, the business transaction, and after that, you need to balance of the account, and then you need to prepare a trial balance. And from the trial balance, you need to prepare the two statements: a statement of profit or loss and a statement of financial position. So as you see, it's a long question. It's, it's a bit a long question. Um, we have done the recording. We've done the, uh, the preparation of uh, the two statements. You should be able to do it. We will not cover this session. Uh, it's a bit lengthy, but you can do it and you can see the answer at the end of the week. So when you see the answers here, so I put the answers in different way. Okay. I put the answers here in different format uh, using the T accounts. But remember guys, so as I mentioned here, so this is another format to do double entry account. If it's confusing, so you can still open T account for each. So should be fine. So don't worry about it too much to be confused. This is another way just to show you there's another way. But if you know how to work on a normal T account, just open T account, balance off, prepare trial balance, and prepare the two statements here. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Now let's move to question number two. We have question number two. We'll cover question number two, question number three, and also we will cover the two, uh, question number four. Okay. So let's move to question number two. Question number two uh, asks you to calculate the two statements. Uh, oh, sorry, actually the one statement is not. Yeah, statement of financial position. Yeah, that's right. So the question for ABC um, PLC uh, for August, end of August 2020, end of financial year, uh, they ask you to uh, calculate statement of financial position. Uh, they uh, present you with for, 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 uh, for the following information including as you see here inventory so here again guys when you look at inventory here of course is a closing inventory because this is end of financial year uh, depreciation of non-current assets so as we did say in the lecture so every non-current assets, there is a depreciation on it. So that's 45. You need to take it away from the uh, non-current assets, which is, um, what's the non-current assets? Here we go. This is the non-current assets, 91. So in order to find the net book value and uh, write it down under the non-current assets in statement financial position, you need to take away 45. So 91 minus 45 equal da da da, -da. This is the answer for non-current assets. So other short-term liability, as you know, this is short-term payable or liability. It's in the current liability, current liability. Um, retained profit, retained profit or retained earnings under the state, state and financial position, of course, under the equity section. We have share premium again, share premium, if you remember. Uh, we need, of course, that's a statement of uh, change in equity, but also, as I mentioned, all statement of change in equity will be transferred to the equity section under statement of financial position. Okay. Bank overdraft from overdraft, this means its current liability. Trade payable, again, its current liability. Trade receivables, its current assets. Tax payable, it's current liability, and long-term loan, it's non-current liability, uh, share capital, it's equity, and cash and cash equivalents, it is current assets. So once really go through each uh, uh, account here and, and write down uh, beside it where 
you where are you going to record it so that makes your life easier when you prepare the statement so as you see from here we don't have really any workings to do right the only one which we need to do is the non-current assets because we need to take away the um, depreciation or the accumulated depreciation so yeah that's all otherwise it's uh, all straightforward actually and we just plug numbers right let's have a look at the answers here okay so as I mentioned the only workings we will do it's working one the non-current assets minus accumulated depreciation the non-current assets at the as I mentioned 91 if you take away the accumulated depreciation or the depreciation the question 45 depreciations for one year accumulated depreciation for this year and previous years anyway whatever that's only 45 available and if you take away 45 46 million pound it's the fair value or the net book value of non current assets so if you scroll up here yeah here we go so you see that's under non current assets so we call it ppe which is a property plant and equipment so in some question you will have a lot of non current assets so again you need to open working for them and list them all and calculate the final figure and you transfer it here in the statement under PBE and W1 don't forget this so 46 million and total non-current asset is 46 million so this is the first non-current assets we've done which is straight really straightforward so again guys uh, don't forget to write the name of um, a statement the date and the name of the company because uh, there is uh, uh, there is a, I would say one mark on the title here okay so in terms of current assets um, with current assets if you look at the statement if you remember so we classified three things under current assets a uh, closing inventory if you remember um uh, what else to, to, to trade receivables not current assets and the last one cash and cash equivalents so if you list them here which is really straightforward really look here we go you let you list them so the total current assets would be 69 million 69 million great so now what we need to do we need to calculate the total assets which you need to add up the non-current assets here with the current assets in order to find the total assets of 115 million 115 million pound okay great good job so this is assets so again guys a lot of question will ask me why do we have two columns as I said this is not debit this is not credit yeah this is only just to make the statement tidy and organized so it's up to you the way you do it so but make sure that it's readable yeah it's not messy right so let's move to current liabilities with current liabilities if you look at the question we identified four items uh, uh, where is the question here we go so we identified four items if you remember the first one other short term payable short term from short term this is current liability less than one year we also the bank overdraft when the balance uh, of the bank is minus also trade payable purchases are made in credit when the business made purchases on the credit they haven't paid yet to the supplier and also the last one is the taxation payable it's the money which the abc uh, company abc plc owes the tax authorities okay so um the four items here you need to list them under the um, current liabilities and if you add them 
the answer will be 28 million 28 million pound okay so next how to calculate net current assets net current assets equal total current assets minus total current liability again total current assets minus total current liabilities so can you see here the total current assets 115 million minus sorry not 150 million actually the total current assets 69 million and minus the total current liabilities is 41 million so that will go and calculate it you will find 28 million pounds 28 million pounds so 69 minus 41 equal 28 million pounds this is the net current assets as we explained this in the lecture so the last thing we need to do which is the non-current liabilities obligation on the business for more than one year and as you see in the question we have the long-term loan which is the 18 million pound 18 million pound so the total liabilities total liabilities equal the total total current liabilities total current liabilities 41 million plus the total non-current liabilities uh, which is 18 million that will go to 59 million to 59 million pound 59 million pound great so the net assets as i mentioned the net assets equal total assets minus total liabilities total assets minus total liabilities as you see total assets 150 million and total liabilities minus total liabilities equal 59 million that goes with to 56 million 56 million pound is net assets net assets okay great so this is the first section of the statement financial position the second section is related to equity with equity if you look at the question we identified the three items including the share capital also we include the share premium and also we include the retained earnings or retained profit So if you add them together with a shared capital, shared premium, and retained earnings, you should be able to find the answer is 56 million. So as you see, 56 million, um, the total equity must equal the net assets of 56 million. In this case, so you know that your answer is right, and you know that the accounting equation is balanced, is balanced okay this is question number two straightforward really but you need just only to find the layout of the statement and practice on the um, layout and uh, the format of statement of financial position okay Play. okay okay so now let's move to question number three um okay here we go here we go right Question number three. Question number three. Uh, the financial year here uh, uh, for uh, Natasha PLC uh, ends on 31st of July 2020. So this means uh, the financial year starts, go back one year, it starts from 1st of August 2019, isn't it? So 1st of August 2019 to 31st of July 2020. This is the financial year for Natasha PLC. So, um, this is a trial balance. This is a trial balance. Okay. And from the trial balance available in the question, what we need to do, guys, we need to prepare a statement of profit and loss. And after that, we need to prepare a statement of financial position. Statement of financial position. Okay. So remember, this is trial balance. This is why we have debit and we have a credit. 
And remember that both sides should equal. So what we need to do right now, as I explained in the lecture, the best way to um, to uh, do the two statements, to analyze the statement by writing down, you need to write down beside each account where you are going to record. Let's start with capital, right? Capital, equity. You're going to record it under the equity section in statement of financial position. Statement of financial position. Long-term loan, it's non-current liability. non current liabilities and it's recorded under the statement of financial position okay how about sales if you remember sales we recorded under the statement of a profit or loss statement of a profit or loss at the top of the statement we start with sales revenue purchases uh, all purchases are recorded in statement of profit or loss statement of profit or loss um, and under the cost of sales. So we need purchases in order to calculate cost of sales formula. And if, re if you remember, the cost of sales formula equal opening inventory plus purchases minus closing inventory. So purchases is one of the items which we need to include under cost of sales. Stock or inventory, 1st of August 2019, this is opening inventory. As you see, it's the opening of the year. Yeah, beginning of the year. So this is the opening balance, isn't it? So this is the opening inventory. And again, opening inventory, we need to record it or we need to use it in order to calculate cost of sales under statement of profit or loss. Salaries. Salaries rent, discount allowed, yeah, all of these are expenses, all of these are what are expenses, and all expenses should be recorded under statement of profit or loss. Motor vehicle, motor vehicle, machine, machinery, all these are fixed assets non-current assets non-current assets and this should be recorded under a statement of financial position statement of financial position under non-current assets trade receivables trade receivables sales are made on credit when the business made sales on credit it's a current asset it's a current asset and should be recorded under statement of financial position trade payable purchases are made on a credit when the business made purchases on a credit so they haven't paid yet the supplier isn't it it's a liability it's a current liability and should be recorded under statement of financial position bank now with bank um uh, you need to think twice. Why you need to think twice? Because it could be tricky. Bank here is recorded, as you see, on the debit side, isn't it? If it's recorded on the debit side, bank or cash, it's money in. Means it's a current assets. The business owns the money. However, if you see the bank is or cash is recorded on the credit side, this is a bank overdraft. It's a money out and should be recorded under the current liabilities. Under the current liabilities. And drawings with the drawals, it's of course you record it under the equity, under statement of financial position, you put it under the equity. Right. And the last one we have is stock. Uh, 31st of July 2020 uh, this is of course a closing in clo uh, closing stock and indeed for closing stock uh, you need to use it for the both statements as I mentioned uh, closing stock you use it in order to calculate cost of sales under statement profit or loss but also you need to use it and write it down under the statement of financial position under the current assets okay 
So now, as you see, we have analyzed the question, which you really makes your life easier. So the first thing before you start preparing the statements, my recommendation always, so finish the workings first. Finish the workings first. Don't do the workings, and after that, go and prepare the statements. So, so far, I can see that we have a few workings. We have cost of sales. We have um, expenses, we list them, and also we have the non-current assets, the non-current assets. So far, we've got three workings to do. Let's start with cost of sales. Of course, cost of sales, the formula, as I mentioned, it's opening um, inventory plus purchases minus a closing inventory. What you need to do, you just need to really apply the numbers, which is opening inventory or opening stock, plus purchase minus closing inventory, the answer is 321,527 pounds. Yeah, which is really straightforward. Expenses, you need to list all the expenses in the question. If you remember, I list them, all of them, including the uh, three expenses available, the discount allowed, the salaries, and the rent. Salaries uh, and also the rent. So these are the expenses available if you list them under trial balance. Why under trial balance? Because you took the numbers or the figures from the trial balance. 71,301. So as you see, the other column is empty. Why it's empty? So do not, don't worry about it right now. We will, um, uh, Fill, fill it, start filling from next week when we start doing uh, more adjustments, end of year adjustments. So the total expenses equal 71,301. Excellent. So on the last workings, working three is the non-current assets. Again, what you need to do in non-current assets, we need to list them. We need to list all the non-current assets including the motor vehicle and the machinery. The motor vehicle and the machinery, which is equal 57,000 pounds, 57,000 pounds. So once you've done the three workings, which you make your life easier, what you need to do, what you need to do, you just go back to the statement and start preparing the statements. And the first statement we will do is the statement profit and loss. Don't forget to write the title of the statement plus the date plus the name of the company. So sales revenue equal 585,000. It's in the question and you need to minus cost of sales, which is 321,527. So from working one. So this minus this equal a gross profit. So the gross profit equal 263,473, which is the gross profit before expenses. If you take away the expenses, the one you calculated and work into so that makes the net profit or profit or for the year is 192,172. 172. So as you see, we call it net profit or profit for the year. Um, why? Or or could be called operating profit really. But why? Because we don't have any tax um, uh, any tax payable or interest payable or other income such as interest received or discount received. So this is why straight away we write this is a profit for the year. So 192,172, this is profit for end of July 2020. Okay, so I hope it's clear. So now statement of financial position, uh, let's move to statement of financial position. So don't forget to write the title again and the name of the company, Natasha, and the what was called the uh, uh, date. So always you start with non-current assets, as I mentioned, and the non-current assets here, the one you did calculated in W3 under the PPE, property plan and equipment, and the total is 57,000 pounds. Say fifty-seven thousand pound. Now you need to go to current assets, and under the current assets, we have the closing stock, and we have a trade receivables, and we have bank. So these three items, if you list them, 
So the total would be the 37,300 pound. So the total assets would be the total non-current assets plus the total current assets that makes the total assets of 40 or 94,300 pounds. So now let's move to uh, the current liabilities and as you see in the question we have only one current liabilities which is the trade variable 9736 here. So in this case you can calculate the net current assets by total current assets minus total current liabilities and the net current assets equal 27,000. 564 pound so the long-term liability or non-current liability it's the long-term loan which is 10,000 pound here it's in the question again so total liabilities total liabilities equal the total current liabilities the total current liabilities 9736 plus the total non-current liabilities equal 10,000 that makes the total liabilities equal 19,739 pound. So the net assets, the net assets equal the total assets minus total liabilities. Total assets minus total liabilities. So that makes the net assets of 74,000 564 okay so under the equity section this is the first part of the statement done now under the East equity section we have capital plus profit minus drawings remember capital in the question we uh, the figure it's from the trial balance from the question so you add the profit 190,172. Of course, you will ask yourself, okay, from where did you bring this number? You bring it from the statement profit or loss. The first statement you've done. So you need to add in the top of the capital and then you minus the drawings. So you will end up with 74,564, which must be equal net assets. So the accounting equation is balanced, which is assets minus liabilities equal equity equal equity this statement uh, financial position so question number three two statements done so again the key to prepare the workings and then move to the statements question number four consists of two um Two multiple choice questions so related to depreciation related to depreciation don't forget that depreciation it's a way of spreading the cost um, uh, uh, of non-current assets over its useful life as I mentioned depreciation is related to non-current assets to the business so when they uh, purchase delivery vehicle so it's a non-current assets but again when they write it down on statement of financial position under non-current assets, ten thousand pound today. So of course next year is not going to be the same value, right? Why? Because they've been using it, isn't it? So it's being depreciated. So the value is dropping every year. And we need to calculate depreciation in order to find the the, the fair value or the net book value of the uh, non-current assets and reflect it on the statement of financial position. So there are we have two methods, if you remember. A straight line method and reducing balance method go back to the lecture and try to practice on them so for question number one there is an asset with the cost of hundred thousand pound is depreciated uh, over five year period expected it's expected to have ten thousand pound disposable value at the end of year five so as 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 now the cost of non-current assets it is ten thousand pound so the useful life is five years and the residual value or the disposable value is ten thousand this means after five years 
there they are expected to uh, sell it 14,000 pound and using straight line method what is the net book value at the end of year two at the end of year two the net book value the net book value Right. First of all, you need to calculate the annual depreciation. So the annual uh, depreciation, the annual, the annual depreciation equal cost minus residual value divided by useful okay cost is hundred thousand <clears throat> minus residual value ten thousand okay it's equal ninety thousand hundred thousand minus ten thousand equal ninety divided by five years isn't it yeah five years and that's what give us let me put it in the calculator so ninety thousand divided by five equal eighteen thousand so eighteen thousand pound is the yearly depreciation is the yearly depreciation eighteen thousand pound so every year the value of non-current assets is dropping eighteen thousand so the question asks you to calculate netbook value, uh, netbook value at the end of year two, which is cost minus accumulated accumulated depreciation. Uh, the cost is hundred thousand minus accumulated depreciation is. For year two, this means we have two years of depreciation. So that's 18,000 plus 18,000, isn't it? So that's 36,000, 36,000, right? In this case, we have 100,000, uh, that's the cost, minus accumulated depreciation. What do I mean by accumulated depreciation? The depreciation for this year in year two, which is 18,000, plus the previous dissertation, uh, previous uh, uh, depreciation, which in the previous years, and we have only one year in year one, which is 18,000. If you add up 18,000 year one in, and year two, that's 36,000 accumulated depreciation. So 100,000 cost minus 36,000. So I guess this will go with uh, 64,000. So that's 100 minus 36 equals 64,000 pound and this is the net book value at the end of year two the net book value at the end of year uh, at the end of year two this means the fair value so when it comes to non-current assets when it comes to non-current assets so they need to write the non-current assets equal the 64,000 pound so for question number two Uh, right on 1st of uh, September 2018 the toy corporation purchased the machine at a cost of 55,000 so the cost of the machine is 55,000 pound and the machine was expected to have a service life of 10 years and no residual value so at the moment we have a machine okay and the cost of the machine is um, 55,000 and it's um, uh, the, the useful life is 10 years right okay so far in this case right let's start annual depreciation equal uh, cost uh, minus residual value so the cost is 55 thousand minus residual value zero because we don't have residual value as the question mentioned that we don't have residual value as you see 
uh, divided by useful life, which is 10 years. Yeah, 10 years. Here we go. So 55,000 uh, divided by 10, that's 5,500. So this is, this is the annual depreciation. So far, the annual depreciation every year is 5,500 pounds. Okay, uh, if you continue the question, the straight line depreciation method was used. This is exactly what we did anyway. In 2020, now focus what happened. After two years, what happened then? In 2020, the estimate of residual value was revised from zero to 6,000, to 6,000. So depreciation for 2020, should be right in this case now they revised the residual value from zero to uh, six um, thousand pound so in this case we need to calculate a new depreciation as you see for 2020 so in this case this depreciation the annual depreciation for five thousand five hundred pound that uh, reflect in 2018 and 2019 but it doesn't reflect in 2020 because in 2020 they revised the residual value right in this case right in this case what we need to do right now we need first of all to find the net book value which is uh, uh, the cost 55,000 then you minus the depreciation in year one and two, which is in 2018 and 19. So in 18, 5,500 and in 19, 5,500. Why? Because under the straight line method, the annual depreciation is fixed. So 55,000 minus, minus the, um, the, uh, the depreciation or accumulated depreciation which is 5,500 plus 5,500. Okay, is that right? Uh, yeah, that's right. So, so that's 5,500 plus 5,500. So that's 11,000. 55 minus uh, 11 equal 44. Okay, 44,000. This is now the netbook value, the fresh, the new netbook value for 2020, uh, which is 44,000 pounds. In this case, from this one, we need to calculate the depreciation for 2020. In this case, the annual depreciation from 2020, okay, would be the cost. Now the cost what? is the book value is the book value net book value which is 44000 okay uh, what is it yeah minus minus the residual value now what's the residual value here 6000 okay 6000 divided by useful life now you need to think, the useful life is 10 years, but now two years left, 18 and 19 left. So how much left will be eight years, eight years left, eight years left. So 44, 44,000 minus um, 6,000 equal 38 minus eight uh, divided by eight years. So that's 4,750 pounds. 4,750 pounds and this is the depreciation for 2020 this is the depreciation for 2020 again this is the weight again 44,000 minus 6,000 divided by 8 years that's 4,750 the annual depreciation from 2020 and that goes to 2021 2022 blah blah, blah if the revised if the residual value stays the same but if they need to change it again so you need to do the same process otherwise if they keep doing it so you need to go for eight years for eight years will be the same 
annual depreciation 4,750 pound. This is the uh, what's called the depreciation for 2020. And don't forget that the depreciation uh, it's an expense to the business, and this should be recorded in a statement um, uh, of profit or loss under the expenses uh, section. Okay, but however, the, the, the netbook value should be recorded in statement of financial position under the non current assets. Under the non current assets, okay. So that's to do with uh, seminar um, four. So I hope it's clear. Uh, a bit confusing, maybe depreciation, but again, the practice, the key is to practice as much as you practice as much as you will be confident in accounting thank you very much have a good day take care bye